So what a kick in the rear end. Here we are in the middle of this quarantine social distancing thing. Um, I'm look, trying to put a, a silver lining on this thing that it's given me a little bit of extra time to spend out here at the test facility. And man, Mother Nature just won't cooperate. We've had high, high winds, super high winds. We've had a ton of extra snow, late season snow. We've had a pile of rain making it tough for the uh, ground to dry out. Uh, so I'm heading out to the range today and I need a chainsaw. Absolutely need a chainsaw. Man, I've got trees down all over the place. Trees down, flagpoles down, antennas down, uh, branches on top of roofs of buildings. I've just got maintenance all over the place. And it dawned on me, chainsaw, that reminds me of my favorite shotgun. That was the name that I gave the Vietnam era duckbill choke system that was utilized to change a shotgun pattern into a horizontal spread, kind of a big oval instead of just a big circle that dissipates. And I remembered, I still have one. Let's spend some time with this chainsaw instead of that steel. So the first time I heard about the, the duckbill choke was when I was flipping through the pages of a book that a friend wrote. Kevin Dockery uh, wrote multiple books, but I was reading Special Warfare, Special Weapons, and it had a feature in it about this duckbill choke. It was, again, a shot spreader that was designed to, to change the pattern of buckshot to be horizontal and utilized during the Vietnam conflict. Uh, at the time, it was offered on the Ithaca Model 37 shotgun. It was designed as a shot spreader to offer a, a horizontal pattern, uh, a four to one, four times the width than the height. Uh, and it was adopted by our uh, UDT guys, our SEAL guys in Vietnam. Not too long after I originally heard about this, this fabled duckbill uh, shotgun choke or shot spreader, I was contacted by another friend, Chuck Madursky from Great Lakes Arsenal. And he told me he was going back into production with them and we'd have something to test. So we wouldn't have to just utilize uh, the information that we had, which was really sparse from many years ago. We could collect brand new data today. Now, I'm not sure how many of these things Great Lakes manufactured. Um, we're about 15 years out of production at this point, but I still have one around and I wanted to share it with my friends through this social media platform. This choke was originally designed for use with triple lot buck. Uh, today, I've got some shot. I'm not sure what size it is. We'll go over it when I load up. Uh, and I have some buckshot. Uh, and obviously, obviously, because the barrel is so constricted, because it changes so much, there's no slugs through this thing. This is for lead shot only. I would hope that that would be obvious, but I would be remiss not to mention it here. Let's set this up on a Remington model 870 shotgun and see how it performs. But first, let's fire a few loads through a traditional Remington 870 barrel. I have an 18 inch barrel. It has no choke system. It's probably cylinder bore. I'm assuming it's been cut at this point. And uh, let's see what kind of a pattern this lays down in its standard configuration. We'll go at 20 yards. I'll shoot a couple rounds of number eight uh, shot and then I'll shoot a few rounds of uh, buckshot, double lot buck. And uh, let's see what it looks like. And then let's do the same thing with the duckbill choke barrel and we'll compare performance. So we have a nice clean area on the backstop set up, a place that actually isn't perforated. That's only the case because I just hung it up. Let's run three rounds of Top Gun number eight Federal uh, two and three quarter inch rounds into it and see what it looks like, followed by two rounds of double lot buck with the standard barrel. Then a double lot buck. Let's go examine it. Just like I would expect, shot absolutely everywhere. 
And that's kind of the point of it. Round barrel, nice concentric spread. That's what it's meant to do. So let's cover this with some new paper and then let's put a few rounds through the duckbill choke and then let's compare the difference. Now let's repeat that same exercise. Three rounds of the same federal number eight, two and three quarter inch stuff. Same exact distance, haven't moved at all. See if this looks any difference with the duck bill. And then let's follow it with two rounds of double lot buck. Go look at it close up. This is so cool, so amazing. So this paper, which was completely covered with the standard barrel, now it's also covered, but from side to side. Once you get to the bottom, there's almost nothing at all here. You can see what looks similar to a hard line where it stops. Same with the top right here, nothing left up there. So what you have is, the center area, an oval, where all of the shot is directed. Think about the applications for that. By looking at my backstop, it should be obvious why I only mess around with shotguns this time of year. It's always before we rebuild the backstop because if you own a shooting range, you'll know there's nothing any worse for coroplast and backstop framing than shot, bird shot and buckshot. Man, this stuff just eats it up. Let's change to a little bit different target and see if this illustrates any better or any different. I've got two steel targets downrange and I'm going to put a brand new coat of paint on each one. I'll space them far enough apart so I shouldn't interfere with the other for the shot group that I'm shooting the one on. I'll put a round of bird shot and a round of buck shot into the left hand target with the traditional barrel. I'll put a round of bird shot and a round of buck shot into the right hand target with the duck bill. And we'll see if that illustrates anything any different for us. Left hand target, one shot of buck shot after one shot of number eight, just like we did before, but one of each. Left hand target, and this is with the standard barrel. All right, let's change to the duckbill barrel and do the same with the right hand target. And yes, I know I need to clean and oil my shotgun. It's a little bit dry after sitting over the winter. I bet that looks a little bit different. And big difference indeed. The left hand target with the standard barrel is covered. This shot covered all over it. With the right hand target, just like before, no hits in the head, no hits in the belly, all of it right straight across. Now, while that might not be super advantageous on a target of this size and shape and style, if you were to think of something on a horizontal plane, maybe a deer hunter, um, where all of your shot would be focused from, you know, from the chin to the tail, instead of rounds going under the belly and over the back. I mean, there are a lot of applications for this type of thing in a lot more areas than just that in which it was designed for. So how freaking cool is that? A choke design going back to the 1960s that was covered in, uh, in this case, in Small Arms Review Magazine in the year 2000 that we have the opportunity to re-examine in the year 2020. I love this stuff. It never gets old. It keeps getting better. There's just so much to learn, and there's so much for me to learn every day. Well, I've got to get, as is obvious to you right now, to building this mess. Man, this, this place is just falling apart, as it is every single spring. We just push it and push it and push it all winter long, and every spring it needs to be rebuilt. We need new coroplast uh, once or twice a season, and every other season we need a new frame. And you got it. This is the every other season. So time to get busy, build a new frame, build some new stands, put up new coroplasts, hang some new targets, ban shotguns from this range, the pistol and submachine gun range, 
and, and go back to the rifle and shotgun range where we're supposed to be using them so we don't ruin the new backstop. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, share us with your friends in your vast social media universe, subscribe to the channel if you don't already, both on Full30 and on YouTube. If you want a little sneak peek of what goes on behind the scenes, you can visit us over on Patreon. And if you just like to talk guns, the best place to do that is probably Facebook at facebook.com slash guntestvids. Till next time, have fun and be safe. Thank <laughs> you.